Let's consider how we might represent a computer system mathematically. Perhaps the most intuitive for computer scientists is to think about the state variable representation, where the state denotes, uh, in some sense, the memory of the system. So it, the, the state is sort of what it, what it is that the system knows about the past that it carries into the future. And so each state variable is referring to one element of the memory. So to give a specific example, consider a particular uh, buffer over here, uh, which has got, let's say, some uh, packets coming in, and there are packets draining out. The packets coming in, they get served, they get sent out. So this would be typical of a switch in the internet, for example. Um, the state variable here is the amount of data in the buffer over here. Let's call that x. And the reason there's a state variable is because the future evolution of the system depends on this, uh, on this memory. Uh, why so? Suppose that the buffer is full and a packet arrives, then that packet is going to be dropped. So the evolution, the next step that happens in the... Uh, progression of the system depends on whether the buffer is full or not, and that's captured in X. Similarly, let's say the, the buffer is empty and uh, the server over here wants to send a packet, but there's nothing to send. So the line, the transmission line will be free. There'll be nothing for it to do. And again, you can see that that depends on the state of this variable. And so at each time step, either the uh, buffer goes up or it goes down or stays the same. And that exactly is the time evolution of the system. So we can view x, therefore, as the memory element, as the state here. So the state in this system is going to be x. Uh, now, in general, one uh, can have a set of state elements. It can be as many as you wish. So for example, if you had a system, uh, a router, which had, let's say, three buffers, then each buffer would have its own uh, occupancy level. And so we could call this variable x1, x2, x3. And that would be the uh, set of three state variables that we have over here. In general, it would be a vector x that goes like this. Now, we are concerned also with the output. The output is denoted y. And the output y is typically going to be a function of the state. And when we consider uh, systems in general, y is going to be some function of the vector x. And of course, there will be some other things as well. But uh, the, uh, for a linear time invariant system, y is going to be a very, pretty straightforward function of x. Uh, and so y will be having the form some uh, parameter c1 x1 plus c2 x2 plus so plus cn xn, where we have n state variables plus some more terms. OK, well, what are the other terms? These other terms are essentially the input values. So when we have the system over here with some state, like so, x, and it has some output y. Now, of course, y can also be a vector. But for right now, let's assume it's a scalar. And it has some input u. And it will have some disturbance w. So the output y is going to depend on the, in, on the disturbances as well, so what the, and the input as well. So what we're going to have is this output y is going to be, so now I can get rid of those dot, dot, dot. And we're going to say plus uh, d times u. So d is some constant times the input u and plus the disturbances. So if you have. Uh, x as a vector, then each of these values x can have its own disturbance. So we'll have e1, e1, w1, plus e2, w2, plus, plus en, wn, where each of these uh, e constants refers to the uh, elements of the disturbance affecting each value of the state. And so this equation over here is the equation for the output y. And we can write it in terms of a, a matrix representation. So let's say x is denoted by the column vector like this, x1, x2, et cetera, xn. Then uh, that's x. And so the, uh, uh, 
the uh, this product is going to be and, and let's say c is the uh, is given by the vector so we just write it as c1 c2 etc cn and similarly we can define e uh, and we similarly define w then we can write y the vector y is given as uh, c transpose x the vector x uh, plus du, because u is a scalar, plus e transpose u. So e transpose w, but vector w, where, so you can see that this works out pretty straightforwardly based on the definition of a uh, vector product, a uh, scalar product of two vectors, of e and w over here. So these are, in fact, vectors, so I'm going to put that over here. Okay. Now, what about the state itself? The state itself is going to be affected by the inputs. And so in general, we can say, for example, x1 dots so in a simple linear time invariant system, uh, let's just use it, into, uh, we can use the simple differential value. In general, it could be x1 dot, x1 double dot, et cetera, but let's keep it simple. This is x1 dot is equal to a11 x1 plus a12 x2 plus, plus b1u plus f1w1. What are we saying over here? We're saying that the evolution of the state value x, how it changes its time, is related to its own value in the past, x1, as well as all the other state variables, x2, etc., up to xn. So this means that we are actually uh, assuming that the state variables can interact with each other. And so uh, that makes the system more complicated because it could be that the memory elements are interacting with each other. And uh, of course, it could be the case that all the values a, i, i are not equal to zero and a, i, j for j not equal to i are equal to zero. This would make the matrix A uh, the matrix A would therefore be a, a diagonal matrix with only these elements being defined. And if that is the case, then we would have a particularly simple system because then each state variable is evolving independent of the other state variables. But the presence of off diagonal elements A, I, J in this system makes uh, is what's called coupling. And uh, with the coupling, what, mean, what this implies is that we are linking together the behavior or the future behavior of the state variables uh, one to the other. And whenever we have coupling, we actually end up with uh, lots of problems. So it's always good for us to try to decouple a system. And if you're familiar with linear algebra, then one way to do it is to take a matrix which has coupling and use what's called the similarity transformation uh, to decouple the the matrix, and that involves essentially rotating the matrix in the, in the appropriate uh, space by changing the basis vectors. But uh, if that may or may not make sense to you, all right. Let's come back to this equation over here, and uh, let's look at the other variables over here. So similarly to x1 dot, we can define x2 dot is given by a12 x2. Sorry, a21 x. Uh, a21 x2, uh, a21 x1, I need to, okay, a21 x1 plus a22 x2 plus, plus a2n xn uh, plus p2u plus f2w2. What is the interpretation? It's the same thing. The, way, the rate at which the x2 variable changes is linked to its own past history as well as to the other memory elements, uh, a21 to a2n, as well, of course, the input u and the disturbance w, and w2 in particular, because you're looking at the disturbances for each. Again, using uh, a matrix notation, we can simplify this as saying x, the vector x dot is given by capital A, x, where a is a matrix, x is a vector, uh, plus b, u, these are, uh, these are both, uh, sorry, it's a single input system, so u is uh, a scalar plus uh, f, w, where f is a vector. And uh, f is a matrix and w is a vector. And so this representation concisely uh, denotes how 
the uh, system evolves with time. Um, okay, the uh, in general we can make the system respond not just to a scalar input but to a vector input. So if you have a vector input u and a vector disturbance w and a vector output y, then the essentially we're going to replace these uh, by the appropriate uh, vector, vectors and matrices. So in fact, this will become the matrix B multiplied with the vector U, and uh, Y will similarly be depending on this. So vector Y will be given by the uh, CTX plus uh, the, the uh, Inputs will be the vector d instead of the scalar. It will be vector u, so it will be dtu plus uh, etw. So that would make it uh, completely vector uh, inputs and outputs. Though in general, and actually certainly for this course, uh, we will not be studying vector uh, inputs and outputs. We're looking at just scalar input, single input, single output systems. That's complicated enough. And if you look at a more general case uh, where we have nonlinear systems, then we would say x dot. I'm going to remove t, and I'm going to assume everything is vectors. I don't want to draw the vector thing anymore. There's some function f of x, the prior state, the input u, and w, the disturbance, and y is given by some function g of x, u, and w. So that's the more gen most general form we can write it and where f and g are arbitrary nonlinear functions. And often what we do is we want to know how the system behaves in, uh, in the neighborhood of a particular set point. So let's say the set point we want, the set point meaning the values that we would like x to take and y to take are corresponding to, are correspond to x naught. And so the set points are x naught, u naught, uh, and w naught. These are sort of the uh, mean values or the central values, and we want to understand how the system behaves in a little bit of a region around it. Then we can then use the Taylor transformation, uh, sorry, Taylor expansion to say something like this. So x dot is given approximately by taking the first term of the uh, Taylor expansion as f of x naught, u naught, w naught. So that's the first term plus. And then in the normal uh, single univariate case, you would take a sort of a x minus x naught times the derivative. For the vector case, we need to do something more complicated. It's x minus x naught transpose del uh, xf, where del xf represents the gradient of uh, f with respect to x uh, plus uh, u minus u naught transpose del uf plus uh, w minus w naught transpose del wf. And so this is the first order Taylor expansion of the function f. And we can similarly write the Taylor expansion for g and then compute y as an approximate Taylor expansion for g. And uh, this will allow us to then use uh, linear system analysis, even for nonlinear systems, in the neighborhood of the area that we care about.